Do you know what the worst thing is you can tell a person who is afraid? Don't be afraid. And yet that is the most common phrase in all of scripture. Over and over, God tells us, don't be afraid. So how do we live with the dissonance between faith and fear? How do we live with the reality that we can't just turn off our fear like a light switch? Welcome to Sermons for a Critical Faith, a ministry of First Presbyterian Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Sue Collar. I'm the lead pastor here. Today we are exploring that dissonance between faith and fear through the story of Mary when she finds out she is pregnant with the Son of the Most High God, something that by all rights should give anyone pause. So let's hear that story from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, and then let's dig into it. Our second scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is a sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be to me, with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Friends, a word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. I'm sitting over here looking at the candles of hope and peace, and I think we need to fan them to flame a little bit. <laughs> uh, note to our ushers. <laughs> So early in my career, I, I've told you this story before, I was serving in an especially difficult church. The pastor who preceded me literally checked herself into a mental hospital when she left that church. It was that bad. All my friends were telling me to get out of there, but being the stubborn person that I am, or faithful, depending on how you looked at it, I choose faithful. Um, I, I truly believed then, and I still do now, that I was right where God wanted me to be. But it was not easy. In the midst of one of those more difficult times, I was driving and I was listening to Amy Grant's song, Breath of Heaven, which gives voice to Mary, at that point a, a newly engaged woman who found herself pregnant with a child, not her fiancé's, uh, and it gives voice to what she was feeling as she went through her pregnancy. In the song, you could see the weight of this change in her life. God has chosen her for this very mixed blessing. She was going to be the mother of the Son of God. But if anyone suspected that child was not Joseph's, she was at risk for being stoned to death for adultery. Now she could tell them, but this angel came to me and said, I was going to be pregnant by, by God, and I'm going to give birth to God's Son. What would you think? If someone came up to you today and gave you that explanation for why they were pregnant out of wedlock, it's exactly the same thing that would have happened then. She couldn't really go tell people what was going on because no one would believe her. Not to mention she was bearing an incredible weight of responsibility knowing that the child that she bore would be the long-awaited savior that her people had waited generations for. Mary wonders why God has chosen her. 
What has she done to be worthy of this responsibility? She's exhausted. She is frightened by the weight of that responsibility. And then she asks, must I walk this path alone? Because she was feeling incredibly alone. So I'm driving along and I'm listening to this. And before I knew it, tears were rolling down my face. Because I realized that was exactly what I was feeling in that church. This sense that I was where God wanted me to be. And that God was going to do something of value with my time there. But I was exhausted. It was hard. I didn't know what was going to be going on. I didn't know what needed to be done. And I felt incredibly alone. Ever since then, Mary's story has been for me one of the most powerful stories in the whole Christmas story collection. Because you see, we go into Christmas with a mix of expectations. A lot has to do with joy and happiness. I mean, after all, we're supposed to be happy and joyful and merry. We wish people Merry Christmas. Um, it's a time for giving gifts and receiving gifts, for family joining around Christmas dinners and celebrations. It's supposed to be a time when all of our worries have just disappeared. And yet, that doesn't happen. We live in a world where even when Christmas is going on, we still live with uncertainty. We still deal with responsibilities that feel much greater than our abilities. We still deal with fear about what tomorrow holds. And a lot of us have parts of our lives that, like Mary, we hide even from those who are closest to us. And so they really don't understand what the load is we're bearing. They don't understand the uncertainty we feel or, or the fear that we carry. And so there is this piece of us that is very much alone. So on the one hand, we want to enjoy the season. And on the other hand, we put on a good face for the world because that's what everyone expects. And we've got to find a way to balance that. What we really need is to hear someone say, don't be afraid, I am with you. But that's not what we go tell people at Christmas. No one's told me that this Christmas season. How about you? No, we say Merry Christmas with the assumption that everyone will say, yep, that's it. But even people of faith need to hear, don't be afraid, I am with you. In 2020, do you know what the most searched for, read, and bookmark Bible verse was? According to the YouVersion Bible app, it was Isaiah 4140. Do not fear, I am with you. It was also the top verse in India, South Africa, the Netherlands, and the Philippines. And searches for do not be afraid rose 80% in 2020. And those were largely people of faith searching. Like it or not, we are afraid. We were afraid. Maybe we still are. Maybe it's not of COVID. But maybe it's of something else. And that's a challenge for, for people of faith. Because there's this myth that says, if you have enough faith, you won't be afraid. As if fear were the opposite of faith. And because we buy into that myth, we're hesitant to share when we are afraid, that we are feeling overwhelmed, that we are feeling alone and adrift. And so we, we Google Isaiah 41 in private. We paste a smile on our face when we're out in public. But as Professor Christine Hong from Columbia Theological Seminary said, reminds us, she says, every day people are faced with untold grief and pain. This is the thing to remember. And the gospel or the good news is not enough to take that peer and pain away, uh, peer and pain and fear <laughs> away. She says, every day we are dealing with this, and the gospel is not enough to take it away. That's not what we've been told, is it? We've been told that this is good news for us, so we should not be afraid. 
for we are. Mary was told that she was chosen by God. She would bear a child who would be the savior of her people and bring about the world that she dreamed for and longed for. But she still lived in a culture where that good news put her life at risk. And it scared her. And all the faith in the world was not going to change that. Those of you who have gone through tragedies, especially unexpected tragedies in your own life, you may have the strongest faith in the world, but you know as well as I do that doesn't mean you don't still feel pain and uncertainty and fear about a future that suddenly looks very different than what you had imagined. When something happens that turns your world upside down, the gospel doesn't take away the feelings that come with that turning upside down. People of faith can still be afraid. You can still be deeply troubled. You can still be unsure. You can still be unmoored and overwhelmed and alone. And if you doubt that, why do you think do not be afraid is the most common phrase in all of Scripture, Old and New Testament? I think it's because we still need to hear it. One of the things I like about the song, Breath of Heaven, is that it invites us to sit with Mary in her fear and uncertainty. We can't take it away, but we can witness it, and we can be present. I think that's one of our roles as people of faith. It's to recognize when someone is feeling pain, when they are feeling loss or fear, and to just sit with them. You can't take it away any more than God can, for we could let them know they're not alone. I think that's what the phrase, do not be afraid, really is talking about. It's not a command. It's when God is telling you you're not alone. You may still be afraid. You may still be grieving. You may still be depressed. You may even still feel alone. Please don't feel guilty if you are feeling all those things and, and you now feel like your faith is lacking because of it. Because what God is saying that is in, what God is saying is that in spite of what you feel, you are not alone. Professor Hong points out that from generation to generation, God shows up in the midst of our fear and uncertainty and confusion. And in fact, that's when God shows up most profoundly, which doesn't always mean we feel God is there. Sometimes the more alone you feel, the less able you are to notice God with you. But fortunately, God's presence is not dependent on our feelings. It's not dependent on us noticing. And maybe that's why God's messengers are always speaking these words, because our feelings can deceive us and we need to be reminded. Sarah Speed, who is the author of the worship series we're doing for Advent and Christmas, writes this. She says, I remember the first time I was afraid. I was a child. It was a nightmare. I remember those pesky monsters under the bed. I remember minutes felt like hours. I begged the sun to rise because fear always begs the sun to rise. Eventually, after minutes that felt like hours, I cried out and my dad came running. He sat at the edge of my bed. He said, there's no reason to be afraid. He checked the closet and the floorboards. He rearranged my pillows. He said, I can stay. And that's when I learned that when you are afraid, love always comes running. Love says, I can stay. That's what God does for us. God sits at the edge of the bed. God checks the closet and the floorboards. God says, do not be afraid. God stays until sunrise. Love always comes running. When you feel nothing, God comes running and stays with you in your nothingness. When you are unsure, God comes running and stays with you in your unsureness. When you feel unmoored, God comes running and stays with you while you drift. And when you are afraid, God comes running 
and stays with you in your fear. That may not end the feeling of nothingness or unmoredness or fear any faster. But the very fact that God chooses to enter our lives and embrace all that entails and tells us that God is here to walk with us through life and God understands fear. For me, that is enough. If I know God's with me, I can face anything, although I still may be afraid. Now, Mary eventually said to the angel, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And that actually sounds a lot like courage, doesn't it? Not fear. Especially as she's thought through the consequences of this unconventional pregnancy. But courage isn't the opposite of fear. It's acting despite our fear. And that's what Mary was doing. Because I'd be willing to bet she was afraid. She didn't know how Joseph would respond. She didn't know if anybody else would find out and she would face the stoning. I'll bet you she was still afraid, even knowing God was with her on this journey. But knowing God was with her, she was willing to take the journey. That's courage in partnership with fear. One of the things that I think helped Mary move forward was she knew God was bringing something wonderful to birth through her. That's actually what helped me stay in that church, believing that God was doing something through my ministry there. I wasn't sure what it was. It certainly what God certainly wasn't doing what I thought needed to be done there. And I knew that I may not see the results of what God was bringing to birth through my presence in ministry there, but I trusted God was at work in ways I couldn't even imagine, even when I couldn't see beyond the next step. God was with me. That made all the difference. Christmas is the ultimate story of God with us. God said to Mary, don't be afraid, I am with you in a way she never could have anticipated. But God was with her, and so she wasn't alone facing her fears. She wasn't alone facing the challenges that came from her unusual situation. When the angels met the shepherds in the field, they said, don't be afraid. God is with you. Come and see. And they did, and they found this baby who would be the Savior of the world. Over and over, God says, don't be afraid. You are not alone. When you believe that, even when you don't feel it, it's easier to move forward. You can take that next step. You can carry that load because you know you aren't carrying it alone. So when you are afraid, read Mary's story. Or listen to Amy Grant's song, Breath of Heaven. It's a powerful promise, and it's one that, that echoes throughout the Scriptures and throughout our lives. You are never alone whether you feel it or not. So may you grab hold of that promise and never let go. Amen.